All right, continuing our journey in chapter 10, we're gonna talk about phase diagrams. So there's our learning outcomes slash expectations. Pause and feel free to read through those. But yeah, we've talked about intermolecular forces, properties, liquids, phase transitions, and we're gonna close out our discussion in chapter 10 with phase diagrams. And so previously we talked about these phase changes between gas, liquid, and solid, right? We have condensation, evaporation, freezing and melting, sublimation, deposition. It's worth knowing this nomenclature, but equally important is knowing that to go one way, you have to add heat to the system. To go the other way, you're releasing heat from the system, or you'll have to cool them down to make them go the other way. And this is all about breaking those intermolecular forces or overcoming the interaction strength of those intermolecular forces. We also talked about things like vapor pressure, right? Where there's there's this uh, vapor pressure associated with the overcoming of intermolecular forces in the liquid and molecules going into the gas phase. And we know this is a temperature dependent phenomena. And so uh, the general statement is there's this temperature pressure relationship, but all of it, both of them dictate what phase exists in the system, whether it's gas, liquid, or solid. And so if we're looking at different phases that can exist, gas, liquid, or solid, there's obviously a temperature and pressure relationship between these various conditions. And so if we make a graph that has temperature on the x-axis and pressure on the y-axis, and we're gonna essentially take a material, whatever it is, and we can apply whatever pressure we want and we can apply uh, whatever temperature we want. And so basically we have a chamber where we can fix the pressure and temperature of the system, and then we can measure what phase that system's in. And so on the temperature axis, here's high temperature, here's low temperature on the pressure axis here's high pressure here's low pressure and we're just gonna change those pressure and temperature relationships and we're gonna measure what phase occurs and so let's pick a point right here let's do relatively high temperature and low pressure and we're gonna find out it's a gas and so on our graph we're gonna label that with a G we're gonna pick another point here is a low temperature high pressure we're gonna find out that's a solid and so we can do this over and over again, and we can change the temperature. We can increase the temperature and see how that phase changes. We can say it's a solid, solid, and then a solid liquid. It's both simultaneously, and eventually it's just a liquid, and then it continues to be a liquid. And so we can keep doing this. We can change our temperature. We can change our pressure. For example, we could start here and reduce our pressure in the system, and we're still a liquid, still a liquid. Eventually it's liquid and gas, and eventually it turns into only gas. And we can do this over and over again, and we're going to see all the different phases that can exist at a given temperature and pressure relationship. And if we're able to fill up the entirety of this graph, eventually we're going to get something that looks like this. And you can see it already. You can see that there's a whole lot of gas down here. There's a whole lot of solid over here and a bunch of liquid over here. And what we've effectively done by measuring the phase that exists at different temperature and pressure relationships is we've created a phase diagram. And that's exactly what this is. Basically, it's, it's solid over here, it's liquid here, and it's going to be gas over here. And so it's just a really nice depiction. We don't need individual data points. We just need to know where these crossing thresholds are. And over here, it's always going to be a solid. Over here, it's going to be a liquid. Over here, it's going to be a gas. And so that is your phase diagram. It effectively tells you at any given temperature and pressure combination, will it exist as a gas, a liquid, or solid? And what are the thresholds between those lines? And so something important to note is that every one of these lines, this is a phase transition. So this is effectively the threshold where a liquid turns into gas and a gas turns into a liquid. And so let's say you start at a point right here. If you decrease the pressure, you're eventually gonna cross this line. At this line, both phases exist, and then it's gonna to transition to being gas. Likewise, down here, you can take a gas and you can cool it down, go this way. And as soon as you hit the line, it's both a gas and a solid, it's in equilibrium. And then eventually it's gonna be predominantly solid or almost entirely solid. And so that's the solid gas transition. This is the solid liquid transition that's melting. And then here's the liquid gas transition. And then here's where all three exist simultaneously. And so crossing this line is effectively where you get those phase transitions. And so again, uh, relating to our previous graph, there's a solid liquid relationship and that's melting and freezing. Similarly, a gas going to liquid is condensation. A liquid going to gas is vaporization. Gas going to solid is deposition. Solid going to gas is sublimation. And so if you cross these lines, you're going to do a phase transition between the phases. And so again, there's our phase diagram. Uh, what's interesting about this phase diagram is intrinsic to this diagram is actually our vapor pressure temperature graph. That's what effectively dictates this line right here, this, this liquid gas relationship. That's, that's 
basically intrinsic to this gas. Remember, this is just a temperature pressure relationship. This is also a temperature pressure relationship. But the difference between this pressure temperature graph and the phase diagram is the phase diagram incorporates solids and gases in the various different transitions. But again, inside this graph is this equation, the equation Clapeyron relationship between pressure, temperature, and it gives you the delta H VAP. That dictates where this transition occurs. And so what's really useful about this graph is just like uh, the phase diagram, just like this graph, it effectively tells you the, the vapor pressure at a given temperature. It also tells you the boiling point at a given pressure. And so this, wherever you cross this line at a given pressure, that temperature right there is the boiling point, just like we talked about previously with this temperature vapor pressure graph. And so, yeah, that's the, the vaporization condensation point. It's also the boiling point if you know the external pressure of the system. And so, yeah, this tells you a lot of information. If you, uh, if you want to know what the vapor pressure is at a given temperature, go up, find that line. That's the threshold. That's, that's the vapor pressure of the system. It also tells you the boiling point and condensation point, And it tells you how much you have to apply an external pressure and or change the temperature to make this transition occur. Likewise, we have this melting freezing relationship. And so it tells you the melting and freezing point. It tells you how to apply pressure and or change temperature to get a transition to occur. Similarly, you can do the sublimation deposition point. You can transition between gas and a solid depending on where you are on this curve and whether you say increase pressure or you want to increase temperature to make those transitions occur. And all that information is embedded in this graph. It's temperature pressure relationships and it tells you the phase on each and it tells you which species are in equilibrium and it tells you basically how you would have to change the system across those transitions. And so, yeah. All right, so in our phase diagram, we have a couple of interesting particular points. One is known as the critical point. And so at some point when you get high enough temperature and high enough pressure, th this line before between gas and liquid starts to get really blurry. In fact, on the diagram, they don't even draw it anymore. They just kind of see these two fusing together. Um, this is a, a super critical state. It's basically, it's not a liquid, it's not a gas, it's something in between. This is actually what they use in decaffeinating coffee as well as dry cleaning. But it's like, it's not a liquid, it's not a gas, it's just something in between. So so again, high enough pressure, high enough temperature, you get something new to happen out of the system. We also on this particular graph have a triple point. It's basically where all three of these transition lines uh, intersect. And at this tri triple point, basically all three of these phases around the triple point exist simultaneously. And it's really cool. You have to find a particular temperature and pressure, but when you hit that temperature, you will see the solid and liquid and gas all exist simultaneously. And for the most part, we're used to seeing liquid and gas. That's, that's normal. That's when we boil water, we see that. And we also see solid and liquid when ice starts to melt. But to have all three exist uh, simultaneously, it, it, it only occurs at a very particular temperature and pressure. If the pressure changes, it's not the triple point. If the temperature changes, it's not the triple point. It's a sweet spot in between those. And so, yeah, here's just a, a quick video showing that triple point can exist. This is liquid water. If you make the pressure and temperature perfect. You can see it's, it's both boiling and freezing. It's gas phase, it's liquid phase, it's solid. All of it exists simultaneously at that triple point and it's very particular uh, temperature and pressure. The other interesting thing this phase diagram tells you, it actually tells you the density of the materials. And so basically when you think about what pressure is, you're squeezing a material down. And uh, the more the more favorable form at, at high pressure, that's gonna tell you the density of it. And so uh, relative density can be predicted based on the slope of this line right here. And so basically the more favorable phase under higher pressure is the higher density phase. And so if you start down here and press it, press it, press it, it would be rather be a solid than a liquid. And so in this case, it tells us that the solid is the more, uh, the higher density phase. It would rather be a solid under high pressure because solid has higher density. Effectively, what this graph tells us is that if we put the solid in the liquid, this solid would sink. And so you, you have different graphs that might have a different slope, right? So you can see the solid liquid relationship, it slopes to the right here where the solid is the more favorable form at high densities. But if you look at this graph here, which is actually uh, liquid H2O and, and solid H2O ice, you can see the slope of the line is this way. What this effectively tells us is if we go up this curve, we increase our pressure in the system, we are um, favoring liquid water over solid ice. 
And the reason that exists is because it's, 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 it's more dense as a liquid than a solid. Ice actually expands. That's why if you put a pop can in the freezer, it's ultimately going to explode. Um, it's because the, the solid is less dense. It's, it's, it becomes bigger. It's a higher volume. And so the liquid is, is a higher density material. And so this effectively tells you that if you put an ice cube in liquid water, it's going to float because it's less dense. And that's what the slope of the line tells you. And so, yeah, a lot of information embedded in this graph and the relationship between these variables. Um, these phase diagrams can get really complex. This is not for the sake of this class, but just so you know, the actual water diagram looks something like this. There's all sorts of different phases of ice, depending on how it crystallizes. It has different densities. It has different transition temperatures. Um, so yeah, you have a whole bunch of different forms of solids, only one vapor phase and one liquid phase, but there's all sorts of different solids. Uh, you can also have something like this for carbon, right? So if you take carbon, it can exist as diamond graphite. It can also exist as a liquid and a vapor. And so you can see two different triple points on this graph, the transition between all these. This is why if you squeeze graphite hard enough, it turns into diamond is because you cross this line and you have a phase transition from one type of solid to another type of solid. And so, yeah, going back to it, this is really information dense graph, right? It tells you whether a gas solid liquid exists. It tells you the transition temperatures between them and transition uh, pressures between them it tells you the density of the materials it tells you which form is likely to exist at any pressure temperature relationship it is a lot of information embedded in one single graph so yeah there's our summary we have all these different phases of substances they exist at different temperatures and pressures but if you know that temperature pressure relationship you get a phase diagram and that phase diagram tells you what phase is present under a given condition it tells you what transitions occur tells you the critical point tells you the triple point it tells you the temperature at a given pressure and so on and so forth it tells you how to alter the external temperature or pressure to make transitions happen uh, it also tells you the difference in, in densities between materials and phase diagrams can get very complex they can have multiple solid phases um, yeah it's a really information rich graph that tells you it, and the x-axis is temperature the y-axis is pressure and it shows you all the different phases and transitions between them all right so that closes out our chapter 10 uh, next we'll get into chapter 11